Hello everyone and welcome to Coach of EIT's Flutterboard Camp. I'll be guiding you through the installation process. So let's get started. We need to download and install four different things. For the first thing that is Visual Studio Code. So just search for Visual Studio Code and go to its website. Click on download for Windows. And let the download run. While Visual Studio Code downloads, let's go ahead and download Git. For that, go ahead and search git bash. Then you can go to git downloads. Here you can select windows. While this is loading, let's go ahead and download the other components. Let's go to flutter. We will search for flutter. Let's go to the first site. Alright, the git has started downloading. In flutter, let's go to get started. We'll go to Windows. For Windows, we need to download this zip file over here. So, let's click on this and ensure that the save file option is clicked. And we'll just start the download. Flutter is a very large download as you see. So, it will take some time. Well, that's downloading. Let's go ahead and download the fourth software we need. That is Android Studio. So, for this, we just need to search for Android Studio and go to the first link right here and then we can click on download android studio you'll have to accept the terms and conditions and then you can click on the download button so now we have all four of our files downloading let's go ahead and install git and vs code so click on the vs code executable file Accept the agreement. Let everything be the default settings. Now while VS Code installs, let's go ahead and install Git as well. Let all the default settings be. So now Git will install as well. As you can see, Visual Studio Code has completed installation. So let's go ahead and set it up. So now let's go to the extensions menu right here. Here we will need to search for Flutter. The search box, go to Flutter and click on the install button flutter should automatically install dart for you but in case it doesn't you can uh, install it manually by searching for dart so now we have installed dart as well as flutter so our vs code setup is complete so git has also completed so now that we have installed uh, Visual Studio Code and Git, let's go ahead and verify that they have been installed properly. So for that, we'll press Windows X and we'll go to Windows PowerShell. Here, we'll type code dash dash version. As you can see, the version currently installed is 1.49.1. .1. So something like this should pop up. If an error message pops up, then we need to add a code to our path which I'll explain later now let's check for git for git just type git dash dash version as you can see we have version 2.28.0 uh, installed so in case you don't see either of these we need to go ahead and add them to path so for that just search for path as you can see at the edit the system environment variables comes up go to the environment variables here go to the system variables inside system variables you will find something called path click on edit here we need to add the paths to git as you can see in my case git path has already been added so i don't need to do this but if this path hasn't been added you can go ahead and add it manually 
this path can be found by going to your file explorer and going to the program files and here you will find the path for git it's right here and if you go git cmd so you, as you can see git is right here so you can just go ahead click here and copy this and add it over here so in my case that's already there so i don't need to do that but if you don't have it do this this is a necessary step all right now that we have completely uh, installed visual studio code and git and verified that they've been added to the path now let's go ahead and add flutter sdk so as you can see flutter sdk has downloaded it so let's go to the folder it is in so here we'll just go ahead and extract it using 7-zip or any other extraction tool like winrar and extract it to a folder so this will take some time to extract so while this extracts let's go ahead and start the installation procedure for android studio click on the executable file the setup will come up shortly ensure that android virtual device is selected here and you can leave this to any path uh, it, it could be the default path as well now android studio itself will also start installing this will also take some time so now the extraction is completed now let's go inside and there will be a folder called flutter ensure that you can uh, see all these files so now what we'll do is we'll go back to this folder we'll copy this folder or cut it and we'll go ahead and put it directly into your windows c drive ensure that you do not put it into any other folder over here just put it directly into your c drive this should take some time to finish and as you can see it's done so you can verify that all the files are here so now to run flutter from the command line we need to add flutter itself to the system variables so again we'll go ahead and search for path as you can see it is i've already kept this one open so you can go through the same procedure to open it and we'll edit the system variables once again here we'll add a new system variable we'll just copy this path right here inside flutter inside bin so you need to be inside this bin folder and then you can click here copy this path and you can go back here and add it using the new button you can paste in that path and you have added it to your path so now you are ready to set up flutter so so test that flutter has been installed properly we'll press windows x uh, we'll go to windows PowerShell. here we'll go ahead and type flutter doctor so now flutter doctor will run and uh, we'll get to know what components of flutter have been properly installed and what things haven't properly installed so if you do not get this just ensure uh, that flutter has been added properly to your path so as you can see visual studio code is done we have yet to install android studio and as you can see flutter has been installed so now we are uh, done with the installation of flutter let's go ahead and proceed with the installation of android studio now as you can see android studio has completed installation let's start up android studio so this is the initial studio setup wizard so let's get started with this let it be on the standard uh, version you can choose the, the mode based on what you like. Let all these values be to their default settings and click on the finish button. So as you can see Android Studio has uh, started its setup and it has completed. So as you can see everything has been installed and everything is pretty proper. So now click on the finish button. Now right here we'll need to go to the configure option here we can uh, go into the avd manager to add our emulator 
here we'll go ahead and create a virtual device so here we can select any device we want these are the default devices that are already included you can also create your own custom one but now i'll proceed with the pixel 3 xl press the next button now uh, there's two different options you might have to choose over here depending upon your laptop supporting it or not uh, if you get some sort of a red colored error message over here then you will have to go into the other images and download the latest version uh, because uh, your system doesn't support uh, these images the latest ones so this is a more older version but uh, if you get some sort of red error message when you are on the recommended page then you'll need to download one of these ones so since i am not getting that error so i'll just go ahead and download Q because that's the stable version right now so as you can see a license agreement will pop up we'll have to accept the license now again it will start downloading uh, the SDK version 29 so now as you can see uh, it has installed the SDK so we'll click on the finish button to set this up and now as you can see the download has finished so we can select Q and we can press next here we can give uh, the device some name and that's it we can click on the finish button so now as you can see our device has been created to run it we can press the play button and if you press the play button the Android virtual device will start booting so it will take some time to boot so while this boots I'll go ahead and show you how to set up your device so to make your apps run on your own Android device we need to do two steps first of all we need to go ahead and enable developer options and USB debugging on your phone uh, so the directions vary for every device for that you just need to look up your phone model with uh, developer options and you'll find the exact position on Google so the second part involves installing the Google USB driver for this you can go to Android Studio and inside Android Studio you can so go to the SDK manager here under the SDK manager you can go to the SDK tools page and here you can go ahead and click on something called the Google USB driver so you click on this click on OK and it will install that for you so as you can see this install is running so now that has been installed and you can connect your existing phone and it will uh, you'll be able to run the app you create on your existing device so as you can see the EVD is functional and we can use it for example I just opened up Chrome so this is how you set up your em emulator and you can power it on and off using this power button and you can close the emulator by clicking this close button as you can see it will save the state and it will close off so now you've learned how to use Android virtual device as well as your own Android phone to test your apps so there is one more configuration left for Android studio for that we will need to go to Android studio configure here we will need to go to plugins inside plugins we right here we will go ahead and search for flutter even if it does not pop up in my case it popped up right here if it does not pop up just search for it and then go ahead and install it accept the condition and as you can see the flutter plugin automatically requires the dart plugin to be installed so you'll have to install both of them so now you can see uh, flutter has been installed and if you search for dart you'll also find that dart has also been installed automatically it will prompt you to restart the ID so go ahead and do that to apply the changes so Android Studio is restarting now and now if we go to configure plugins you can go directly to the install tab and you can see that flutter as well as dart has been installed so now we have done with the setup 
for Android Studio. So, so now that we've installed everything, let's go ahead and verify that everything is installed. For that, press the Windows X button. Then we'll go to Windows PowerShell. Here we'll again type Flutter Doctor. So as you can see, we have some licenses that have not been accepted. For this, we need to run this command Flutter Doctor dash dash Android licenses. Now as you run this uh, command, as you will see, there have been many licenses that have not been accepted. So just keep on pressing Y and enter as many times as it requires you to. So as you can see, it has accepted all the SDK package licenses. So in our virtual devices, we'll just go ahead and press the play button and it will launch the R emulator. As you can see, our emulator has launched right here. So with this, we have set up the devices. Now we can recheck Flutter Doctor. As you can see, everything is a green tick right now and we get the no issues found. So now everything has been set up properly. The only part left now is to set up our environment for our new project. So for this, we'll go to Visual Studio Code. Inside Visual Studio Code, we'll go ahead and press Ctrl Shift P. Here, we'll click on Flutter New Project. If you don't find it directly, just type Flutter New Project. Here, now you'll need to give a name to your project. Let's give it test underscore proj. Now, we need to select a folder to create the project in. So, I'll just create a folder here for this folder called test proj. You can give it any name you want to, and you can select this folder to create the project in. So it's going to run flutter create and it will create this for you as you can see your files have been created right here so as you all can see uh, we are in the main.dart file this is the default code that is included with the new flutter app so let's go ahead and look at uh, how to run it we'll go to run and we'll run without debugging so it is going to start creating the app you can check on it through this right here and into the debug console so for this it will uh, start building the app this will take uh, quite a bit of time depending upon how powerful your system is as you can see our app has been built and it's being started right now if we go to our device emulator as you can see uh, this is the default app and you can press this button right here and it will update this count so this is how we have set up our flutter environment thank you for watching hope you enjoy the flutter bootcamp